All right, uh, then let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning. I, I mean, I'd like to start off with the leadership. It talks about the 2023 campaign. Atiku Tunubu Kwankwaso offers solution to ailing economy. That's how uh, the leadership captions it this morning. There are several riders. APC flag bearer targets 10% GDP growth. The question should be how. Um, in U.S. to attract investment to Nigeria, ex-vice president. And you remember there was a saga about him not being able to, you know, get to the United States because he was, there were some issues he had, diplomatic concerns. Well, maybe he was trying to prove a point there. A job creation plan will reposition the economy. Uh, Kwankwaso, that's the NNPP quoted to say. Naira depreciates further to 800 at parallel markets. And yesterday we asked why, what's the essence of having multiple, uh, you know, exchange rates Ignore G5 at your own peril. Or Tom wants PDP. Oh, really? So we have G5. We talk about G5 now in Nigeria. Uh, redesign now won't check the rising inflation. That's what analysts quoted to say. I mean, despite the fact that uh, this is one of the reasons for redesigning the Naira. But uh, economic or financial experts are saying contrary to this. I can't wait to share GD's thoughts. PMB Soludo, others mourn as Mbazulike dies at 93, a nationalist and a legend of that. Presidential candidate orders console and condole with Davido trauma over his son's or over their son's death. I mean, that has actually thrown Nigerians, you know, into serious mourning. And just before we move away from the leadership, we'll just take this one quickly. Terror lets devastating to economy, federal government. EFCC probe six billion dollar uh, power projects. That's the much we can take at this point. Let's go to the nation with these headlines. Uh, Owl unbundle transmission to provide power. Uh, says Tirubu Owl unbundle transmission to provide power. Um, he's met the organized private sector in Lagos State uh, yesterday to interact with them. Uh, Interesting one there. He made some statements about his economic uh, uh, and business agenda. Uh, right as to that, restates commitment to double digit GDP, promises consumer credit revolution, renewed anti terror war. Uh, more from the nation. First Republic Minister Meiji dies at 93. One killed, many injured in Lagos fire. Uh, are you can't lead PDP to victory? We K insists. And uh, Fasaranti, a Feni Ferre, has endorsed Tinubu. Right, that's for those who say, you know, the man denied it. Uh, well, there you have it. Passengers stranded as unions picket MMA2. Investors lose a 2.8 trillion naira. A sell off worsens. Please probe David O's domestic workers over son's death. Uh, US, UK terror warnings will hurt Nigeria's economy, says FG. Uh, some stories on the front page of the nation. Well, let's quickly move away from uh, the nation newspaper and just quickly check out the next paper for us is the punch. And on the punch, you find EFCC plans massive raid on forex dealers. That's the dollar crisis. Naira's free for worsens now 857 naira. So we thought we we're talking about 800 naira. Abuja Forex dealers flee into hiding. Kogi politician arrested with 326 million naira. BDC operators back commission. The riders you find underneath the board caption on the punch. Now, moving away from that, uh, David Doe, autopsy likely as police free six workers and detained to, uh, you know, the entire country has been thrown into mourning. And of course, our condolences with the family. Still looking at the front page of the punch, commuters lament when once Lagos drivers back. <laughs> Drugs wanted Lagos hoteliers, six houses, 217 million naira seized. Kwanka sought to recruit 1.5 million soldiers and policemen uh, were looking at the campaign of 2023. Why I am better than Atiku or B on economy? Uh, and Tinubu, uh, that's what Tinubu is going to say. I like to take this again. Why I'm better than Atiku? 
will be on economy. Uh, former Lagos State Governor, it's good to say. Uh, I'm sure that uh, that should you know, mean a lot, but Gita Johnson will be telling us more. That's it on The Punch this morning. I will take a final paper, The Guardian, very quickly. Uh, 2023 rift widens in Southwest over a Fanny Ferris endorsement style. Uh, medical trip, Clark chides Buhari over failure to transmit power to vice president. That's a very important one. Airlines count losses, relocate operations as union shuts MMA2. Uh, some of the, uh, the, the stories on the front page of The Guardian. Oanese urges FG to honor Meiji's memory, release Kanu. Uh, some of those, uh, those are stories on the front page. We won't take too much time there. Bring in Julie Johnson, senior lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism at this point. Uh, Julie Johnson, let's start with uh, Fanny Ferrer. They're taking the headlines again today. Um, after uh, denial, um, now the, uh, the first warranty camp, if one call it that, is now coming out with a full chest, a uh, full chest to say um, uh, they're endorsing uh, the APC presidential candidate. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Um, this what this thing, this developing story and uh, the lack of unity shown in the Southwest politics, as far as Fanny Ferris is concerned. There's no there's there's no difference in the pattern of the various endorsement the presidential candidate of the APC as a sheep. We have the cases of the bishop, um, the bishop that came to Abuja, and you also have controversy trading. It's um, it's endorsement or non-endorsment. Jude Johnson, can you please uh, turn down the volume of your television set? We seem to be having a, a haul back. You know, uh, can you please turn down mm -hmm. the volume? Yeah. Or turn off the volume? Uh, so while we're waiting for Judy yes, Johnson indeed, mercy, to take uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> this affair very much has been one that uh, has um, uh, a snowball, it is, has, is in danger of snowballing to something that may, uh, may, may be far from far worse than what we're seeing it to be right now. I'm sure Judy Johnson knows that very well. The politics of the Southwest, as far as the national uh, politics is concerned, can, can, get, can go to extremes. Uh, remember the day of the wild, wild west? you know, uh, in Nigerian politics. So I w I'd like to take his thoughts, uh, get to hear what he has to say about this. But, um, you know, we started with denial. In fact, I was discussing this at some point yesterday, no, day before yesterday, and someone said, oh, the man has denied it. He said he never endorsed anyone, uh, that he only blessed, and that if Atiku comes or becomes here. But, I mean, from what, what the people told? are saying this morning, we can see um, that uh, uh, the... the uh, the thing is widening, though the writers on The Guardian give a little bit of a different twist to what other papers like The Nation uh, are saying. For instance, uh, what The Guardian sent a writer to that headline, uh, 2023 rift widens in Southwest over Fanny Ferris endorsement style. Um, it says, conscience of Yoruba nation endorsed Tinubu, not a Fanny Fair. Um, I remain a Fanny Fair leader. We're backing Tinubu. Faso Ranti insists. Southwest students ask Adeba and Joe to set as I grudges uh, adopt Tinubu. Tinubu woos press. So that's okay. We, we have a guest back uh, now. Um, uh, Gina Johnson, uh, welcome back. Uh, so you can continue in the, with the point you were making. As, as far as I'm concerned, you could see that um, there's a discordant tone with respect to his endorsement or not endorsement. We had, we had the position of Chief Ayuadi Banjo. Now we're now hearing the position of Chief Ayuadi Um Controversy has trailed the, the candidate of the APC with respect to, 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 his, to his endorsement by bishop or no bishop or by different groups across the length and breadth of the country. Controversy has trailed his, his education and the rest of it. I think. Uh, moving forward, the candidate needs to step away from, from controversy. And there is usually this misconception that um, the Southwest will vote in the same manner. Or I, for example, will be influenced by the endorsement or non endorsement of Afrin Ferry um, Group. As far as the election is concerned, Nigeria is a bit sophisticated than what it used to be in 1999 or what it used to be in the 1970s or in the 1960s. 
people are looking beyond the prism of their ethnic group or ethnic interest, particularly in the South, to vote for whoever they want to vote for. But I think that the candidate of the APC needs to move away from, from, from crisis and from controversy of endorsement or non-endorsement, faith bishop or no faith bishop. It will help the candidate to, to, to ensure that he moves away from, from controversy. And if you check the, the result of 1979 election, our Lord did not win overwhelmingly in the Southwest. You'll be shocked with the number of votes that, that Shagari pulled, that NPM pulled in the Southwest concerning the presidential election. The results are there. That um, the margin of the votes that they were able to pull, even in the Southwest, where you have our Lord's dominant presence. Now, not to talk of a situation whereby there's no dominant presence uh, compared to our law when you compare as your attitude. So I think they, they need to address issues and leave the the mundane issues of endorsement or no or no endorsement this particularly works better in america but in nigeria it worked for them in 20, in 19 i can understand the desperation because without the endorsement of afn if you know, would have become the governor of lagos state in 1999 it will have been full show left it will have been full show left in, in actual sense Four local government elections were cancelled in 1999 for Tinubu to win the nomination of Action Alliance for Democracy in 1999. The result of Ifako Jai local government, Ikorodu local government, Mushin local government, and Lagos Island local government were added to the result of the primaries of the Alliance for Democracy. Funja Williams will have become the, um, the, pre the gubernatorial candidate of DAD. So I could see the desperation for those that understand the politics of, of Lagos and the politics of of the southwest uh jd let's quickly look at the issue uh the dollar crisis and you know the solutions or the actions from government and her agencies the efcc plans massive raid on forex dealers uh, what do you make of this it's only in nigeria that you have um an informal sector engaging in narrow exchange where you go to anywhere in the world that you see people selling the, their currency on the road, there's none. There's none. Where you see people trading in the currency. If you want to do any transaction, you go to the, you go to commercial you go to commercial banks uh, 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 for you to, to get to get this done. Also, it's only in Nigeria that you see that governors and government officials will be spending foreign currency. We have preference and balance for, 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 for as legal tender, as, as, as the currency of exchange. It's only in Nigeria you see it. It's only in Nigeria that you see that the governors will openly be spending dollars, ministers will openly be spending dollars. And then, um, so the, the, the taste and the demand for dollar will always be on the increase. We have it on record that. There are states in Nigeria where the governor's will, the governor, the governor then will collect the allocation. Once the allocation of local government is released, he will ask the local government chairman to convert the allocations to, 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 to dollars. He will give them their own share and then they will, they, they, they will use the rest. So until we have respect for Naira, until we have uniform exchange mechanism, not parallel mechanism, whereby you have the official rate and then you have the parallel parallel rate. There's no way in the world it is done. And there's no way Naira will be fashionable. You know the joke someone shared? He said he would have loved America to come out with the idea that they want to change the color or the design of the dollar and that people should submit or should deposit or should lodge the, the, the dollars they have in the bank at a particular date, that after that date, then the dollar becomes irrelevant. He said that's when you see the panic among the Nigerian, the Nigerian elites and <laughs> the Nigerian, um, the, 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 the Nigerian political class. So he said this Naira, the one for Naira is nothing. So what, what is, what is, what that's is, really the, funny. what is even to, 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 to people, you will see when, we have, we have had cases of governors giving dollars. These are the people that the FCC should arrest, as far as I'm concerned. Why, why would you make dollar to be the illegal tender, the currency of exchange in Nigeria, and you dedicate your home? 
So what value do you think over time? What value? Even if you give a kid, Kofi, and a message, if you give, if you show a two-year-old a dollar and a naira, the two-year-old will go for a dollar. That's how bad <laughs> the perceptual value yeah. of our currency is. And then we are talking of the currency improving in value, improving in value. People make money from exchanging, from, from engaging in parallel market. They will buy the, the, the dollar at official rate and they will go and sell at the parallel market. So the, 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 it's, it's but, but did they, we have it, a situation. I, I mean, can it be compared to, you know, what the city is actually facing, you know, in Ghana? You know, while we were in secondary school, <laughs> while I was in secondary school, we had a lot of, we had a lot of Ghanaians until there was a policy of DMG. We had a lot of Ghanaians. We see this was regarded as toilet, toilet, toilet paper in the 80s. What has happened to, to the, to, to the value of CDs over time? It improved considerably until, until the recent, um, um, economic meltdown necessitated by the lockdown and the COVID, the COVID measure which brought about a halt in business activities which has affected almost every currency all over the world. It's only the Naira that has engaged in the free fall. And this free fall will continue. This free fall will continue until we make Naira to be the lead tender. The currency of exchange in Nigeria, for, for even for government, for central bank governors, for officials of central bank and the ministries and agents of government, dollar is more fashionable to them than Naira. All right, uh, Jimmy Johnson. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to leadership uh, this morning with this um, look at the terror led by the foreign missions in some foreign missions in Nigeria, foreign embassies, and um, the federal government through the Minister of uh, Information and Culture, Haji Lai Mohammed. Uh, pointing out that the terror alerts are having a devastating impact on Nigeria's economy. Maybe they shouldn't be given these alerts if that is the case. What's your take on this? What was his initial reaction when the terror alert was released? Raising terror alert is not, it's not something new or something. It's something which is done in civilized society all the time. You have level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. So they released this alert. For you to be conscious, but you know we are in a society whereby government officials are well protected by the various security agencies they have, so they care less about about the citizen. But in other climate, the, the citizen are, 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 are the master. Sovereignty resides with the people. So there is terror alert in London. There is terror alert from different types of level and different which determines the different measure. I, I recall the initial reaction of the minister saying that in this country they have they have um, they have terrorist issue. So why are they raising? Now he's talking about to utter. Why would he not utter our economy? They have their own intelligence. They have their own intelligence in dealing with terror, in dealing with terrorism and other security issues. It's about the level of your intelligence. And intelligence is interpretation of information. What are the information you have gathered? What sense are you making of it? Now they gather the information. And they interpreted it, they came up with an intelligence report. Before they release the, the before they released it publicly, they must have shared this with agencies of government in Nigeria. These are the stops, and these are the things, these are the intelligence you have gathered. What are the steps you are taking? And you didn't do anything about it, and you expect them to continue with it, and you think it will not hurt. You see, it is it is very, very clear that there's no doubt that it will hurt the economy because. One, let's take for example the embassies of United Kingdom and and um, and United States were closed in Abuja. People that want to go for a visa or people that wants to come to Nigeria to do business and rest of will they come to Nigeria? So I just think that um, the minister needs to be more cautious and more proactive in in releasing a statement and in, in reacting to whatever information or whatever intelligence that is shared. By, by other countries with respect to the security situation in, in Nigeria. There's no doubt. You don't need, the, you don't need rocket science or SUSIA to tell you that. Once the terror alert is, is raised, it will definitely affect businesses because it will affect movement of people and goods across the length and breadth of the country and the nation. So it's, it's, it's just a basic understanding of international 
economics. All right, uh, G.D. Johnson, thank you so much. We have to go. Uh, we look forward to sharing your thoughts on Friday, all things spinning core. Uh, that's the much that we can take, and we do appreciate your time. Thank you, Mercy, and thank you, Godwin. Have a wonderful midweek. You too. And our condolences to the video and chairman. Very sad one indeed. Thank you very much, uh, GDS. So we'll take a break. We'll look at what happened today in history today, of course, being uh, the second day in the month of November. And um, yesterday was the anniversary of the Ikoi building collapse. Uh, when we return, we'll continue uh, more conversations, of course. Uh, right here on the breakfast. Please stay with us.